Super. First step done. Um, so the second thing we have to do is to uh, select uh, a reporter that will be reporting back to the big group on the discussion. Um, if we have someone who uh, can take this on voluntarily, that would be great. Any anyone who likes to to report? Oh, I would have uh, volunteered, but I actually need to leave in like 15 minutes. So yeah, I hopefully someone else can do it. Sure, sure. Um, anyone up for grabs who would like to, to do the reporting? I see we have Sayaka, we have Fernando with us. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, I'm Eugenio. Uh, I'm Equatorian. Uh, but now I have uh, some problem for the tra translation. Uh, I choose the, the climate change now. Uh, okay. I have no more no more information to continue. Yes, Please. I think I don't know if they explained this, but for the breakout groups, there will not be any translation. So I hope uh, I hope you still join us uh, in English. It's slowly, it's slowly, but now uh, I want to make the translation. Where is there now? I have the 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 the, the mirror, el escritorio. Puedes entender un poco de español? Claro, claro. Eh, mira, lo que pasa es que para las presentaciones sí, efectivamente había traducción, sí. pero para eh, las discusiones no podemos tener traducción. Entonces todos tenemos que participar en el video. No. Ah, vale, vale, entonces sí. Sí, sí. sí Estaré sí. mirando. Sí, lo But sí. my English is very terrible. I have no level <laughs> to, to can understand all, all things. But sure. I want to try. Sure. Try, if, try. If, if you want okay, me to translate you. something for you, I can I can do that from, from Spanish to English too. And I see that we may have some other uh, friends from, from the Spanish speaking region too. So if you want to participate in Spanish, that's fine, and we'll try to to accommodate with with some quick translation. Okay. Okay. Thank sure. you. Sure. We still though we need to have someone who can do the reporting. Thank you, Emily, for for uh, for unfortunately not being able to do it, but but uh, reaching out is can I maybe Hernando, Tayaka? I am just picking names from the from the list. Florentino. Anuja, anyone who would be uh, happy to do the, the reporting back? Uh, hi, hi, this is Sayaka. Sorry, actually, I just joined like 10 minutes ago due to this uh, final moment of SMQs and RAM reporting. So I'm sorry, but I don't think I, I can be the best person to. I really try to catch up actually over this VNR. <laughs> sorry. 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 Can well, be we next time. Started, we haven't started the discussion yet. So, so no worries. You haven't missed anything. Um, but but that's perfectly fine. I'm Anuja. Actually, it's same with here as well. It's uh, five minutes ago I joined because of a technical error here. So <laughs> I'm so sorry uh, because uh, I'm just uh, thinking what's happening and what's going on because it's so new. I joined uh, actually. It's now itself I joined. Sure, no problem. Yeah. So this is Florentino. Uh, I was just wondering, what exactly is that that you need? So what we need is someone who can just take notes and then report back to the big group on what are the highlights from the discussion, what can we bring back as a group uh, to to uh, to discussion on how we can include climate change, environmental issues in the VNR process. Well, I mean. I I can try it. I can try it. <laughs> but we will be very grateful if you can try. <laughs> we'll, and yeah, we'll I, I can we'll try. Okay, then let's go. Then, then, okay. Then let's go on. 
Well, thank you very much, Florentino. Let's let's kick off then, uh, because time is running. Um, okay, super. So, can you see the questions? Just to make sure that we have a, uh, have that up on the screen. Yes, we can see them. Excellent. Um, so the first question is, um, if there are in this group some of the practical ways uh, that you can share with us that the government um, have included a climate change a perspective, but that also takes into consideration child rights or, or the, um, the, the, the effects of environmental issues on children in a VNR process. Um, um, and I know that, that this is an issue that, that often is, is a bit overlooked. Uh, so if, if you don't have an example of a specific VNR process, uh, then you could also um, maybe tell us something about um, an example from an adaptation plan or an adaptation policy uh, or climate change or environmental adaptation policy. Um, that looks at uh, the, the the inclusion of children uh, and and child rights. Do we have any anyone who wants to to tell us about um, what they have been doing and, and what has been happening in in their their context related to to this issue? Well, Emily, since, since you're leaving soon, but still here with us, maybe you want to share something from from the work that that USF has been doing, either in in Jordan or in or in um, in 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 Kenya. Related. Yeah. To thanks. You. Thanks, Moa. Um, yeah. So I'm with the UNICEF Jordan Country Office, uh, working on. Uh, climate and environment mainstreaming and i'm also doing some some of the policy work we are just starting or jordan is just starting their first vnr process so we're kind of just diving into that um so i don't have any examples from that <clears throat> but <clears throat> excuse me what we did last year was to um influence the new um there was an update of the climate change policy the national climate change policy there was also a draft um, of the National Adaptation Plan, as well as an update of the NDCs. And we worked quite closely with Ministry of Environment on those and really tried to use the, the UNICEF guidance on child sensitive climate change policies, which was really good actually to use and very helpful. And I mean, I don't think that we can say that they're fully child sensitive yet, these documents, but there's definitely been um, an improvement in terms of the first drafts that we saw where there were very little mention of children. And given that Jordan, like the Jordan context is very, like we have an extremely young population and also one of the most water scarce countries in the world with a lot of refugees as well. So there's a lot of vulnerable communities. Uh, a lot of uh, refugee camps where uh, UNICEF is providing water. We thought it was a very important area to sort of bring in because these things are obviously going to get worse because of climate change. And we've also been working a bit through our youth section on um, trying to figure out how much do young people actually know about climate change. And it turns out the awareness level is very low unfortunately, uh, but that there's big interest. So that's sort of the other angle of it that we're trying now through our youth programs to raise awareness and also create platforms with um, with Ministry of Environment for young people to sort of come in and influence more. And we did arrange or uh, support the hosting of a local COI before COP, um, COP26. And that was the first time in Jordan as well. And it was great to see young people sort of coming together and being able to talk to policymakers. Um, again, we have a lot more to do, I would say, but at least these are sort of, sort of some, some steps where we're trying to bring children into the minds of climate policymakers and climate change to the minds of children and sort of empowering them so they can do more. So yeah, I think I'll stop there. Excellent. Thanks, Moa. Thank Just maybe a couple of questions for you then. Um, the guidelines that you mentioned, do you think that they could be somehow 
applied or inspire um, uh, the, the, a, a child and climate perspective in a VNR process too. Uh, the ones that you that you mentioned for um, child sensitive policies. Do you think that that's a, a document that could be interesting to share with the group, or that that could that UNICEF could promote in this context? I would think so, but with the disclaimer that I so far know very little about how the VNR process will look like. Uh, so I think I, I would I want to say yes because it was really useful in terms of the of the policy reviews. Um, but again, with the disclaimer that I'm not sure about the exact nature of, of the VNR process. Sure, sure, excellent. But it's, yes, please. It was in any case very a very helpful guidance. Super good, actually. Mm, super, super, and also maybe also to mention to the group if if you're unaware of the, of the COI, so that's the um, the conference conference of youth uh, that um, that is kind of parallel to the conference of the parties to the um, uh, to to the Paris Agreement, uh, which is the most known part of the of the uh, UN climate framework, um, and usually what youth do is that they organize these conferences of youth at national level, and then they put forward the position, which is then brought up to the global uh, conference of youth that provides input uh, into the, the the discussions and negotiations. So this could also be a forum that could be interesting for those who are looking at bringing in youth and bringing in youth voices into the VNR processes specifically on climate change to look at and be able to collaborate with just to mention that um, do we have any other uh, examples someone who wants to bring out uh, something that they have been doing in their country that is related to policy processes or the VNR processes specifically I don't see any raised hands, so let's move to um, uh, to question number two. Um, uh, what are in in your countries or or in your areas where you are working? Um, uh, are there any ways in which UNICEF and partners are working with uh, governments, decision makers, to address? Child rights uh, and well-being within the context of climate change uh, and environmental degradation. Um, Emily mentioned a few where they were working more on the policy issues, but maybe there are um, other examples from um, I don't know community-related work, uh, etc. Someone who wants to to share um, what they have, um, what they are working on, or have have seen, or uh, or were working on in this. In this regard, Sayaka, for example, it would be really interesting to hear if UNICEF Djibouti is working on climate change issues. Is that is or is it something still yeah. that, that you're considering <laughs> to do? Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so first of all, uh, to be very honest, um, I'm so beginner for the VNR process. You know, I was just requested by uh, the deputy rep to join this today's call. Uh, plus, uh, I was really late, so I'm sorry. But it just maybe yeah, just some yeah, um, just ideas just just coming up to my mind. Like I, I'm a chief of education, and I'm I'm working normally through education sector. So, like for example, like we have developed uh, together with MOE uh, the education sector specific DRR strategy, and then through the process, we of course you know we advocate uh, the make it the policy or strategy to be like child friendly but also inclusive of girls and refugees and children with disabilities. Of course, in the context of climate change, environmental degra degradation crisis, is it's very relevant to to Jibushi. Like we have desertification and sandstorm, flooding, flash flood, so all these issues that the government is very aware of. And then we need to also promote uh, the school level. Um, DRR, the school level preparedness, like for example, training of, of stu children or students, uh, like to to form like a child brigade.
and then of course you know UNICEF always promoting you know they themselves as an agent for change they are the one mess you know um, disseminated messages the importance of preparedness also awareness of protection of environment and also this uh, climate change as global discussion no it's not just country context that uh, the people uh, normally not necessarily aware or paying attention about the issue as as regional or global level because they are of course you know struggling their daily life in their village in the very you know the kind of uh, concentrated scale but we need to also you know make sure the awareness uh, of the issue not just in their village but it's everything is connected and then this preparedness and drr is really necessary at the community level but also through schools like through and with children that them themselves as agent for change to you know promote and advocate uh, sending mess key messages so these are the areas that we are working on and then this drr strategy specific although it's specific uh, to the education sector but we are one of the best sectors that actually working having a proper functional sector coordination mechanism um to to have this DR strategy but also for the um the influx of refugees that also related to the the worsening of the 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 land use um, um for example we, we haven't received the i mean of, observed yet but there was a situation that because of a tigray crisis of, of northern ethiopia we prepared uh, preparedness and contingency plan in case of influx of refugees. And of course, in that case, we needed to make the, the preparedness plan or, or this um, response plan in an environmental friendly way, but also be aware of this climate and protection of the environment related to also climate change, but also child friendly and then the child centered approach. I mean that in that case it's refugees also and especially for the girls refugees and and with dis the those with disabilities, but these are the areas that we are actually kind of able to somehow influence yeah uh, to the government policy framework or also um, development of strategies, not just UNICEF but with partners and sector partners as well. So yeah, I stop here and over to you. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ayaka, for sharing that. It's very, very interesting. Um, and and yes, um, Djibouti for sure is, is a country with many challenges, but great to hear that you're working both at the local and, and national level and kind of trying to link those different um, um, levels uh, and bringing in experiences from, from, um, from your uh, community work too and in schools. So excellent. Um, I'm going to ask if maybe Joshua or Douglas were with us, if they want to share something from their, um, from, from their uh, work or, or their context where they are based. Um, do you have any examples of, of good work together with, uh, with children or on child rights and, and climate issues or environmental issues that you want to share with the group? Okay, um, I take that as a no. <laughs> Stephen, um, I can see that that you're here from the DABY Foundation. Maybe you want to share something about your experience, either working with the VNR process before, if you have done that, um, or related to climate change and and child uh, rights issues. Good, good, well, good afternoon. So I'm Stephen and I'm, I'm speaking from Accra, Ghana. So with the V and our process, this is my first, like my first time and I was I was just introduced to it without that I joined the I joined the code. But I realized that UNICEF in Ghana is collaboration with its partners are doing uh, are doing certain things to address child rights in the context of climate change. So in in, in, in about a year or two. There used to be a e waste dumping site in Ghana, known as the Agubulishi e waste dump site, where 
a lot of e-waste finding in each way there, especially left battery. They do recycle, cut the battery and take the left out and they do recycle it and resell it. And you could we, we easily find kids there. There were a lot of kids in those places. And uh, it, it had a, 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 a lagoon or river, but that along it, none of that. The other river, which was very polluted. But the government was petitioning, and currently, as we speak now, the, the, the whole place has been closed down. The whole place has been closed down. And the danger that these kids were exposed to, most of these kids are now finding out where most were coming from the northern part of Ghana. So some have gone back and some of these kids have been put in school. So I, I think it is it is it is it's in a good direction. And if kids are you and I think you were saying something or or uh but you uh, you're on mute. Or were you finished? <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry. Hello. <laughs> yes, we can hear you now. Okay. So yeah, so that that's it. That's it. That's one one activity here, which my organization is also into promoting and creating awareness and letting these be part of attaining the SDG goal. And our focus in climate action. So we were having a research and we realized that. A lot of those kids in that area was once a past who find their way into the, the, the dams to try to pick metals to to sell crops there. But because the place is not closed now, they they are they not go to class because they find other things doing. And most of the there was they used to burn when they get the wire and they want the copper from it, they used to burn it with ties and hit brings out a lot of fuels. There was a lot of fuel. The place was very polluted. But since the place was closed down, on this case done, I know they're supposed to go polluted again. And we find out that most of them now go back to like when they close from school, they did stay in school and on good attend programs around. Yeah. So that's it. That's what is being done here. And I I I, I wish to share with you. Mm. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Stephen, that, that for for sharing that experience and and for sure the the issue of e waste is is um, um is really critical in many countries uh, that that are receiving all of that uh, technology technological waste that that we that we are producing as societies and and it's a it's an issue with uh, strong connection to many equity. Um, um, uh, aspects uh, because it's it tends to be the most uh, vulnerable communities and the most the poorest children and families that are uh, effectively doing this kind of, of recollection and 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 working with or going through the e waste and and then bringing it to uh, to try to find uh, a value for for what they can find and those are the ones that also have the hardest issue uh, the, the the biggest difficulties in then accessing um, services, health services, and, and having protection gear, et cetera, that is needed um, uh, to not get, um, to not be in contact with pollutants and, and, um, uh, and dangerous toxic um, chemicals. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I think we're almost heading back, but I just want to open up the floor related to the last question. Um, if you have seen any good pra good practices or gaps uh, uh, in terms of government um, action or investments to address child rights uh, in, in relation to climate change. Um, uh, this is, of course, an issue that often is is uh, is overlooked. Um, so so we know that there often that. There's, there's a need to build the evidence, there's a need to do advocacy related to showing why uh, children uh, needs to be considered um, in, in um, actions and, and plans, for example. Do you have, does anyone who hasn't spoken yet uh, maybe want to share an example from uh, a good practice or, or, or a gap or a, a difficulty that they have seen in, 
in uh, highlighting um, uh, child rights uh, in in the climate change or environmental uh, um, context. Hi, I am uh, Anuja from Sri Lanka. Uh, I would like to extend some of my ideas here. And uh, actually, as a country, Sri Lanka, um, I think we are uh, in in much of the standards, uh, actually, in terms of uh, child rights, uh, because uh, we have a, a special um, ministry only to uh, uh, only to uh, do all the uh, everything about the children ch about uh, children's right and, rights and uh, women's affairs actually children and women affairs ministry it's called uh, so so there's a special focus on uh, child rights in sri lanka uh, and also there's a very good mechanism and a structure uh, to get uh, get the um, uh, get the get the activities done uh, uh, in in the government sector because uh, there are special officers uh, specially uh, specially assigned to look after the child to look after children and also to uh, to uh, just to address the child children's issues at village level. So it's a very good structure because uh, almost all the cases of uh, um, uh, any complaint could be uh, reported or could be uh, could be obtained uh, from those village level or uh, divisional secretariat level officers uh, by themselves. So there's a very good structure and a mechanism uh, in Sri Lanka uh, with respect to uh, children's uh, rights and uh, uh, about these issues. Especially when we talk about the climate change, actually it's uh, it affects not only to the children but also to this whole family. But what we have to we have to look how it ha how it affects the children especially. So mainly because of climate change, it affects the economic status of the families and also because of uh, those uh, disasters, uh, natural disasters, which occurs uh, from time to time. And then how those children get uh, get uh, attention and how they get uh, how the children cope with all those problems uh, actually i think uh, we are in actually we are uh, uh, somewhat strong in this uh, in this because of those uh, um, officers and because of that structure um, and and the mechanism uh, but I see some loopholes because sometimes those village level officers and uh, those officers uh, uh, do not report much and maybe they have some inefficacies. So we have to get into that uh, uh, that uh, thing just to get them uh, done their work very efficiently and uh, correctly. That that is a very uh, I think that is a point we have to uh, point out. Otherwise, uh, actually, those those officers know the families which uh, uh, can could be affected because of those climate change issues. That means marginal families, marginal income level families, and those people know how many families in my area and who could be affected uh, because of those. Uh, climate change issues and they, they are highly aware of and also there's a reporting structure then they can report in any case of uh, uh, hazardous effects that's what i had to say about sri lanka thank you but well, well that is that is an, a, a great note to to end on really for sure anuja uh, thank you so much for sharing that uh, that is a, yeah. a great example because often as uh, as as you mentioned that the, the child rights issues and climate environment issues are not really they don't really speak to each other. The different the the, the different sectors and and government um, uh, units that work on these issues. So it's it's a really great example, uh, and and I'm very very happy to hear that that uh, yeah. even though everything is not perfect, that in Sri Lanka there is actually a system set up to to try to address this. So that is that is uh, that is really great. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, the room is. Um, is closing in um, 110 seconds. <laughs> so if we have any really quick um, 
final remarks, then we can take that. If not, Florentino, thank you so much for um, for uh, volunteering to be the reporter back to the to the big group. I don't know if you have been able to capture everything or if you have any questions that you wanted to clarify before we move back into into the plenary. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone over there. Um, actually, I've been trying to get some notes based on the reports getting from the from our colleagues, and I couldn't get that that, that much. And especially when it comes to Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Deki, I could not share him proper. Seems like there's been some some sort of network problem or so much wind down there. But I try to gather some information, which I believe I can even share with you guys because now there's so what I've... Sure, yeah. please, please go ahead. We'll see if, if we managed everything, but but please uh, share in, in short what you're thinking to report back. I think that's a great idea. So um, starting with uh, Miss Emily, who was the first person to intervent, uh, actually <clears throat> the remark based on the on the climate change update implemented in his area. We were one of the positive things that she mentioned. Uh, the role of the, well, she, she also mentioned the, the importance of the role, the importance of young, of the youth implementation or- Florentino, just so that you know that we're, we're going back to the big room, so we're gonna have to hear, but I'm sure that, that you've captured everything and, and thank you so much. Okay, colleagues, thank you. Ah, sí. Eh, sí. Emiliano, eh, tienes que poner. Ahora me sale la voz. <laughs> oh, colleagues, welcome back to the plenary. Um, we have uh, some minutes left, and we have uh, two or three things that we still need to do. So uh, we're going to try to do it as uh, quickly as possible. So I'm going to go to the groups uh, and I'm going to give you um, room for a sentence that summarizes in 30 seconds, you know, the main highlight of what you discussed. Remember these will be recorded, so no need to give us a summary, just a sentence of what you felt in the meeting. And then I'm going to give uh, the floor quickly to two colleagues uh, to close the meeting. So let me uh, start quickly uh, with uh, Manel on child rights, one sentence summarizing the discussion. Manel. So perhaps over to Hannah, if you'd like to do that. And I was the reporter. Yeah, reporter. I will try it be quickly. Uh, we spoke about uh, data disaggregation and different uh, data sources uh, for data collection on children's rights, also specific mechanisms and legal frameworks uh, specific on children's rights, children laws, or children's rights coordinators, also about holistic approach, and of course, about including voices of children at first in all these systems. Thank you, Hannah. Very succinct, very informative. That was a great summary. Test for the other groups. Uh, Let's go to Sola and Jennifer on uh, public financing. We had actually some very similar themes come out. Um, there was uh, some excellent points about the importance of collaboration, about working across agencies, the one UN approach, engaging with civil society, as well as with government to identify evidence from, from multiple sources. And then where evidence doesn't exist to use this as an opportunity to engage with government to emphasize the importance of being able to, to demonstrate their commitment. And then also how to, to use the narrative structure to, to display um, and, and, and demonstrate progress. And uh, we also um, touched on the importance of child representation and uh, the case of Zambia who used child representation also to, to demonstrate some of these issues. Excellent summary. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. Let's go to number three, meaningful child and youth awareness, engagement and action. Kate. Thank you. And thank you to my group for sharing their varied experiences working with young people. Uh, a lot of great um, 
experience of working with vulnerable groups of young people. So that was one of the themes of the discussion. We also spoke about uh, working with certain uh, decision makers at the community level, for example, who traditionally are not used to uh, creating spaces for children and young people to participate and how that uh, how important that is. And one of the key, I think, themes that came out as well in our group is how, you know, some of the challenges on um, working directly with children and young people, particularly when they come from very vulnerable and marginalized groups and have very critical uh, needs when it comes to um, shelter and education and, and uh, food and health uh, access to that as well. We didn't have, uh, I think we only had one person in the group who had directly worked on a VNR before, but a lot of interest and a lot of experience that can be applied to working in the VNR process. Um, so that's a summary from group Excellent. three. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go to data, Mark. Thank you, and uh, thanks to the group for everything, and thanks to Abdul Razak uh, for being rapporteur. Over to you, Abdul Razak. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we have discussed uh, some challenges related to the segregation of the data. Uh, the first question was, uh, how can we address uh, the discrepancies between uh, the, gov uh, the, the data produced by the government and the uh, institutions? There were some concerns of that, because when you compare some data produced by the government with the other data produced by the other institutions, you see there, there are some differences between the two, the two data. So what uh, the recommendation that comes strong was to was to follow uh, the rules of the official statistics uh, data. Uh, the second question was, uh, how can we capacitate uh, the national human institutions that are working uh, human rights in understanding the, the, the data collection uh, processes for monitoring the, the child rights? So, uh, that it's important to the national uh, uh, importance of the data and to follow up uh, uh, the, the data so that we can make some progress on the on the rights of the, the children. The third question was about to finish, the, Abdul Razak. Just wrap it up <laughs> because we have to continue. Yes. The, the, this, the other question was the, the usage of the uh, big data uh, as an innovative way. So we uh, it was mentioned that uh, we, we can use the data or the data for some issues, but we want to, uh, for example, like uh, the the poverty. But we we need to regulate the data with the other the other sources of okay. the. I'm sorry, Abdul Razak, but I have to I have to stop you right now.